Good morning, good evening, wherever you are across the world and the universe. Welcome to my Quantum Living Podcast at the intersection of science and spirituality. I'm your host, Anna Anderson. This podcast is an integral part of my quantum work with people with personal transformation and spiritual healing programs and powerful guided meditations. If anything on this podcast has resonated with you and you'd like to explore how you could work with me, please reach out via my website at quantumliving.com.au. Whether you are listening to the show while driving or commuting, doing chores around the house, relaxing on a couch, or flying in a spaceship across the galaxy, whatever the case may be, I hope you'll enjoy today's episode. Okay, let's begin. Hello and welcome back to Quantum Living. One of the most commonly asked existential questions is, can I change my destiny? Can our life's blueprint change even without our conscious influence? Even our destiny captured in our astrological chart at the time of our birth? In my quantum programs, I teach that the answer is yes and no, (laughs) which is seemingly a paradox. But this paradox can be resolved by the answer yes with a caveat. So, yes, you can change your destiny. Even those events I call non-negotiables or set in stone. But it depends. Based on my own insight received from the spirit over the years, anything in our destiny can be changed if our soul agrees to the sought deviation from its intended path for this incarnation, as this will have consequences. For example, A planned life experience, which proves to be too hard for you to bear in your current circumstances, with potentially detrimental outcomes, can be relegated to another incarnation. And I firmly believe that this is something we can negotiate with our soul. But just like on earth, there is a hierarchy of authority in the heavens, so to speak, (laughs) and so if your soul has dug its heels in and wouldn't budge, (laughs) You can escalate your plea to the highest spiritual authority, the Creator, who, just like the owner and CEO of a company, can override everyone else's decision and has the final say. So, essentially, you can pray for the grace of God. I titled this episode Lifting the Veil with Astrology. The veil I am referring to is the veil between the dimensions, the veil that prevents us from perceiving and understanding who we truly are as spiritual beings, hiding our past and our future and the true nature of our soul. I mentioned our astrological birth chart containing the blueprint for this life, which includes the karmic and soul influences shaping this incarnation, if you know where to look for it. In my view, astrology is still misunderstood undervalued and commonly dismissed as a body of knowledge with all its tools, as a parapsychological phenomenon not to be taken seriously. Our life experience is like an iceberg swimming in the unlimited ocean of the quantum field. We can only see its tip above the water, unaware of the massive structure underneath. And even when we do become aware of it, it's not easy to access the vast information about our life it stores. This is the domain of our unconscious mind with the door to the universal consciousness or universal mind. We can access it only via the sixth so-called psychic sense, either as our own intuition or with the help of a psychic reader. But there is yet another tool we can use to lift the veil between the conscious and unconscious aspects of our life, astrology. Both art and science, astrology can reveal to us a lot of information enshrined in our birth chart, written in the language of the heavenly body's energetic imprint on our soul and physical DNA at the precise moment of our birth. That's the theory which, to me, makes a lot of sense. Hopefully, your time of birth was recorded accurately as every minute counts, 
and I believe it might even shift you from one zodiac sign to another if you were born precisely on the cusp. If that's you, I would suggest double-checking the hospital or other records of your birth time. God forbid the mechanical clock in your delivery room was running few minutes behind or ahead of time, thus making your all-important birth time simply inaccurate. So what do I do, you ask? Well, the best thing is to consult a professional astrologer, pointing to them any anomalies you believe are in your birth chart if you already have it drawn up, or a significant misalignment of your confirmed key zodiac signs, the sun and the ascendant, and your sense of connection to a different part of the sky. A professional astrologer will help. Okay, now I'd like to introduce to you my special guest, Diana Doe. Diana is a professional full-time consulting evolutionary astrologer based in Melbourne, Australia, a fellow Aussie, yay, <laughs> working with clients from all over the world. She has several years of astrology practice and training under her belt and chose to specialize in evolutionary astrology. She also has a background in counseling and a strong connection with all things spiritual and metaphysical. You will find more information about Diana and her work in the episode show notes on my podcast website at quantumlivingpodcast.com. Hello, Diana. Welcome to Quantum Living. It's a pleasure to have you on my show. Hello, Anna. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm really excited. Wow, me too. We'll have a wonderful conversation. Yep. You know, I've got on my computer a logon screen, that's that's a PC logon screen, which has random photo slides. And the other day I saw a beautiful photo of a rocky island, mm -hmm. which was taken very cleverly at the water level. So half was under the water and the top half was above the water. And it was absolutely stunning showing the magnificence, not only of the top that we can see, but of the underwater part we can't normally see. And I thought that this is a great metaphor for our life. So today I'd like to explore the concept of our life experience being like an iceberg, where we can see only a teeny tiny portion of it, while the rest is hidden beneath the surface of the water. Things like our gifts and talents, karmic influences, and purpose of our life, and us as souls and human beings are hidden from us, and there is so much we don't understand. Hence, we often use our sixth sense and various divination and esoteric tools to gain access to that unknown part and make the invisible visible to help us on our journey. And astrology, especially evolutionary astrology, is one of such tools. And so I'd love to have a chat with you as an expert in this field about how astrology, and especially evolutionary astrology, can help us by revealing those hidden aspects of our experience from the spiritual to practical, whether it is our birth chart, transits or predictive astrology, it can give us a glimpse of the hidden parts of our life. So to kick off this lovely conversation about astrology in the context of our life experience, let's first look at it from the highest perspective. Is it really the bottom, the hidden bottom of the iceberg we can't normally see? I love that question. And I think the answer from my perspective is it's both. It's yes and no. And and I say both because I feel strongly that it depends on the individual's consciousness and, you know, where the person is in their life so far. Um, but as, astrology um, 
more and more people are aware of their astrology these days. That's that's for sure. Mm-hmm. But mostly they're aware of what I call descriptive astrology, which absolutely has its place. And what I mean by that is we explore what it may mean to have the moon in Leo, for example. And this not only helps us understand ourselves and reveal a little bit more of that iceberg, but it certainly makes some elements of life particularly unconscious habits, for example, become more illuminated and we bring more awareness into these parts of ourselves and we get to see that, I guess, the water level of the iceberg dispersed (laughs) a little bit. (laughs) Where I think um, evolutionary astrology really has a big impact is, and just to give it some framework, I guess, is that We all have birth charts, right? This is a given whether you believe in astrology or not, you have a birth chart. But the question then becomes, do you just randomly have your specific um, astrological configuration or is it, and and I mean, is it just a haphazard randomness that sees you being born with these specific planets and placements or is there a reason? And evolutionary astrology absolutely believes that the universe is um, an intelligent design with divine order and purpose and astrology can absolutely reflect these universal truths and the planetary cycles can help describe where we're at in our evolutionary journey. So evolutionary astrology suggests there must be a reason to have the chart that you have and if there are a reason, what is it? Where did that come from? What does it mean? Could it actually be that the chart that you have is from your soul's past? Could it mean that your chart is a soul blueprint or soul DNA or part of your soul contract, whatever you'd like to call it, but that can also show your show you your evolutionary path for this lifetime? So could there be much more under the surface that when made visible offers you insight into your current life's purpose as well. So I like to sort of play around with the theory that, you know, could some of the major themes that happen in your life, your habits, your instinctual drivers, exactly what you were saying before, your emotional reactions and fears and insecurities, and particularly even talents, um, stem not necessarily from your early childhood beginnings, but before that in your your previous life. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. So there is a part that we can see of the iceberg of our life, put it this way, in this incarnation. And there is a big part that we can't see, but we can find out. We can bring it, well, not so much bring it to the, to the surface, but we can find a way to have a look at it, to bring the information about it through astrology. Yeah. Beautiful. I like to say mm-hmm. um, when we're in, in that context that when we're working with a client's chart from that soul perspective we're we're actually swimming around if you like that metaphor (laughs) in I guess the possible archetypal themes that may have been occurring in that past and then we work to explore how these themes could be playing out in the current life um, and we explore the possible soul's evolutionary pathway in this life and in so doing, we are bringing absolutely what lies below to the surface and into awareness and consciousness. However, we've still got to choose what we do with that information. That's a whole nother yeah, subject. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So we can actually even use this metaphor that you just touched upon, talking about what's above the surface and below the surface being our unconscious and our conscious mm. understanding because that's I think it it lends mm. itself very nicely to this concept and makes a lot of sense. Now, is astrology, broadly speaking, an alternative to using our sixth sense, for example, or psychic readings, or our own intuition to reveal those hidden aspects? Mm. So I'm not talking necessarily about looking into the future, although This is probably the most common purpose, (laughs) but even as a self-reflection or in meditation going within. So how would you, if you like, uh, compare or position astrology within the context uh, or against this other tool or other tools that we have, like psychic readings, using our intuition, etc.? 
Is it complementary? Is it something completely different? Can you use both? Can you mix them up? Look, I absolutely, 100%, don't think it's an alternative to using our sixth sense or our own intuition. I I very strongly believe that, in fact, it's a powerful and poignant set of delineation skills that can help guide our intuition. So evolutionary astrology, particularly the way I practice it, does I don't get really specific about your past life. We don't we really focus on the archetypal possibilities and themes. So I'm not about to tell someone, and there is a purpose for me to tell you all this, but I'm not about mm-hmm. to tell someone <laughs> that they were Joan of Arc, for example, but I may be able to explore yeah. themes of past religious or spiritual work or persecution trauma, for example. So the mm-hmm. symbology that astrology offers illuminates themes that I then find my intuition will then tap into and expand upon. Um, so for me, evolutionary astrology and intuition and meditation and sitting with a person's chart, which I often do, I often meditate on it um, and find the, and then I find the symbols just come alive and start to talk to yeah. you. And that's where your intuition um, kicks in. So your sixth sense of, of course works. And so does, you know, working with past life regressions and they all go hand in hand and complement one another. However, um, I also do find that the more astrology I know, the more I practice it, the better my intuition gets. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost a chicken and egg situation. Yes, and, and, it, and it does make a lot of sense because one is mm. feeding of the other. So the more you practice astrological readings using your intuition, yeah. that muscle strengthens and, and vice versa. Yeah. So it's a very nice combination. So if someone is looking, and we will talk more about some case studies, but broadly speaking, if someone would like to find out more about, say, what is their life's purpose in this incarnation and going into the future, maybe looking at some options that are coming up, some opportunities coming up, would you advise them to just seek an astrology reading with an astrologer who can add their own intuition into the the, the reading of the chart? Or would you recommend that they seek both services separately? Oh, wow, that's a good question. Um, I think, again, it depends on the person who's seeking the reading. And I genuinely believe now, in particular after practising for a full-time for a couple of years, that the people people get drawn to different astrologers for different reasons. Personally, mm-hmm. I would, I'm a big fan asker. I, I'm an existential thinker. I want someone who's going to work with me on those big picture kind of um, questions. So I think you've got to be really careful and there's no reason not to ask various astrologers a lot of different questions and particularly how they use their intuition. Um, there are some incredibly good intuitive astrologers and there are people who advertise themselves as intuitive and evolutionary astrologers. And that would be where I would start um, using both. And I do find that probably Mm -hmm. no matter how much preparation I may have done once I'm sitting with that client, the symbology of the chart and their energy all just comes together to give me a story that really speaks to them. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned benefits. So how astrology can help us navigate through life by revealing those hidden aspects of our existence from the spiritual to practical? Could you please talk to some of the key examples like uh, our birth chart, planetary transits, predictive astrology. I'm sure there is there is heaps more. I just remember those <laughs> those three. Yeah. They are the most common ones that people are looking for. So how can we use those various aspects yeah. of astrology to help us navigate yeah. through Look, life? Understanding 
um, I guess, the higher meanings of planetary cycles. And I'm talking about, when I say higher meanings, each astrological configuration or planet in your chart has a huge spectrum of how it can manifest, right? And we often don't know at what level the person is working with that energy. Is it conscious? Is it is it above the iceberg or below the iceberg, right? But when we can help work with someone um, on a soul level, on an esoteric level, we can really help them realign with their soul purpose and their intentions. And we can help people grapple with life's big, you know, existential questions like, why am I here? What is life about? How can I make the best of it? I mean, not that we necessarily can give you the the answers on a platter, but we can help you navigate that path, right? We can also you know, address um, more practical questions far more accurately, right? So as well as that, we can dive deeper into broader spiritual perspectives of our life as well, which can guide us on a higher spiritual truth for ourselves and and, and with that in turn helps us offer more practical outcomes, right? I think they go go hand in hand in, in some way. So we can get clarity on various domains such as our relationships, our vocation, our vocation, I should say, our health, pretty much anything that you can think of. Um, it offers us the chance to ask some really big questions and seek some very big answers. And I believe that, again, like making the unconscious conscious mm-hmm. is our first steps towards healing and then ultimately we're on our first steps to progressing on our soul's evolution And we can look to the chart to help guide us on what our evolutionary purpose and soul intention Mm. could be in this lifetime. Of course, we have to be very mindful of the social and political and cultural and gender context when we're doing this work. That's something that I think really needs to be called out. But Mm -hmm. either way, it, it gives us a great chance to gain perspective on what our highest potential could be and the possible manifestation of what a planet's sign and placement um, energy is for us in this lifetime, right? So the past offers us clues for the present and we can also look to the chart to see what kind of events and transits and progressions will this person undergo in this lifetime. And I'm not talking about finite predictions here. Um, I don't practice that kind of astrology and um, I I kind of really don't like that kind of predictive astrology saying you're going to meet your future husband on, you know, the 10th of August 2026, right? What we're looking at are the archetypal themes that are coming up, the specifics of how these will play out is still ultimately going to be up to you. But really, mm. we are. We're looking at those kind of archetypal indicators, and what are some of the life's big questions that you might need to be answering right now in relation to help you unfold your soul's purpose? There are transits. That's basically the movement of the planet. So we, our chart is like a, a stationary blueprint um, of where the planets were when we were born. Transits and progressions, and various other astrological methods for determining planetary influences at the time some people will go through some transits I should say everyone will go through everyone goes through a Saturn return for example lots of people have heard about that but then there are others that are highly individual for that particular person and they are very strong signatures um, to help the person understand what is being asked of them now on an evolutionary soul level and how you can best integrate those kinds of themes so does that answer your question? <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. And uh, predictive astrology, that's about looking more into the future, yes? Again, well, based we can, on transit, yes? Well, yes, predictive astrology is looking into the future. So, for example, Anna, if you came to me and we sat down and you said, I want to know what the next 12 months look like, mm-hmm. I am looking at what are the archetypal themes that are at play? What are the questions that are going to come up for you. Mm -hmm. What are thick questions such as where are you still allowing fear to dominate in your career choices, for example? So I can I'm using archetypal Mm -hmm. themes, but coming up with real life questions that help you perhaps unpack some parts of yourself 
that then enabled you to move forward, if that makes sense. So that I'm not doing yoga. Well, I might say there is opportunity to ride this particular kind of wave if you choose to ride this kind of wave. And there's also possibility that there could be some difficulty in these sorts of areas. But here's a higher way or a different way of looking at it. Here's a way you can become more conscious of what those planetary themes might mean for you in the next 12 months. And again, by bringing things into light, by bringing them into consciousness, they become a little bit easier to deal with. Yeah. Not always, but yeah. they can give you some <laughs> some some very good perspective. They certainly have in yeah. my life for sure. <laughs> yeah. And even in in a by way of being prepared for something. Mm. To an extent, obviously, we're not talking dates and, and times, but in terms of opportunities and, and trends coming up. So you would derive this information by juxtaposing the person's birth chart, which is the planetary blueprint at the time of their birth, mm -hmm. against the changing mm -hmm. planetary positions over the next 12 months yeah. across their chart because obviously those energies would be changing yes. and then when you see that a particular planet will say in three months time yes. will, will be in this specific place in the chart that will activate it so then you you can draw mm -hmm. information from that is this how the mechanics of it works yeah yeah that's pretty much okay. how the mechanics <laughs> of it work yeah, the very mechanics. Sorry if I didn't describe <laughs> that properly. No. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I just would like to to uh, if you like explain this a little bit more for people who may yeah. may not be familiar. But essentially, that that's how this works. And more broadly, for anyone listening to this podcast who are wondering how come different planetary positions can impact on me, <laughs> and I had a conversation about this with Stephen Forrest on one of my earlier podcasts, so I would encourage people to listen to that one as well. But when people are wondering what is the connection between the moon or the sun or Venus being in a particular position on the sky, how is it possible that they will affect my mood or my or or my decision making or or anything. So I would say that and please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> The bottom line is that everything is energy and every planet, just like every object, has particular frequency. And so it is all about the frequencies, various different frequencies coming into play and interacting with our energy field, with our DNA, with our soul blueprint, which then activates certain outcomes. Is yeah, it? absolutely. Uh, nice. It's it, Look, I've <laughs> grappled with this question. Most of the just grapple with this question. Um, some are particularly good at, um, I guess, digging into the science or the metaphysics behind it. It's, it's not, it, yes, it's energy, it's vibrational frequency, it's um, harmonics, right? So Stephen even talks about harmonic frequencies and I love that because it relates to music and then when you really start unpacking, you know, music yeah. and maths and astrology together, yeah. there's lots of symbology. That's a whole other podcast probably, not one for me to answer. But um, we can just be as simple as talking about the moon. And the fact that we most people will recognise that the phases of the moon have a physical and mental and emotional effect on them. Um, it certainly does on our planets, uh, I mean, on our planet and the tides and our animals and it kicks in instincts. So if the moon mm. can have this effect, why can't the outer bodies, the other planets have this effect? You know, and a lot of astrology, astrological information now is, historically been um, passed down for, you know, over 2,000, 3,000 years of people observing what the effect is of Saturn being in Aquarius, for example, on the collective or on the individual. So does that answer your question? Um, it's it's a hard one. <laughs> it it works. Uh, it's years and years of observation and it it, it just does work.
beautiful. So now, Diana, I feel that it's the right time to talk about your special offer, which is exclusive to the listeners of this podcast. So Diana is offering a free natal birth chart reading valued at $185, that's uh, Australian dollars, for one lucky listener <laughs> to be selected randomly. To be eligible over the next two weeks only, so that's by August 23rd, subscribe to her newsletter on Diana's website, Aspect Astrology, and the link will be in the show notes, quoting the secret code with your name when you subscribe. And she will, as I said, she will select someone randomly and will contact the lucky listener after August 23rd by email to arrange the reading. And please note that in order to receive a birth chart reading, you need to know your time of birth. So not just the date, but also the time of birth. So you may to need to need to check your your birth certificate <laughs> for for that information or or ask your parents. Now here is the secret code, and this code will not be in the show notes. So grab a pen and write it down. Quantum eight two three. So quantum as in quantum physics. Q U A N T U M, quantum eight two three. So, if you'd like to the, to go to this random selection, please include this code, secret code, with your name. Yes. So, when you go to my website and you subscribe, you will see a section that just says name and email address. Just next to your name, put that code so that I know that you've come to me that way. Okay, lovely. So it would be, for example, Lisa Smith. Yeah. Quantum 823. So then Lisa will go into the draw or however. So that goes in the name section and then you just include your email. And by subscribing, you'll also get my regular newsletter about what's happening out there at the moment. Lovely. And I also would like to to give a plug to your Instagram account. Oh, thanks, Anna. <laughs> because I was quite impressed with the information in your posts and your reels and all that, that you're posting out there. It's not just very shallow, quick sort of uh, description or or horoscope. It actually uh, goes fairly fairly deeply. It's quite comprehensive and very interesting. So it would be a good idea to follow Diana. At- Aspect Astrology. <laughs> Aspect Astrology. And again, the link will be in the show notes. Yeah. Lovely. So now I would like to ask you, could you please give us a couple of interesting case studies of how astrology mm. reading or predictions or insight has made a big difference in someone's life? Um, I focused, I have focused particularly on um using evolutionary astrology where I've I, where I have specifically looked into people's past you know explored with them their past lives um I don't necessarily always delve into that with um, an astrology reading but sometimes it becomes really important and in one client that I had I had really um a lot of trouble finding their authentic voice they were extremely shy, deeply introverted, and they had significant social anxiety. And from their perspective, they really had no memory or logical reason from their earlier life or from their parental upbringing that could explain or account for why this was the case for them. And actually, they had a lot to say. They were a very deep philosophical, spiritual thinker who really did want to share their perspectives, but get speaking up and getting heard was literally crippling for them. But interesting, this is also what their chart, their current chart was suggesting that on an evolutionary level that they should be doing was, you know, find a way to speak their truth. So we use the chart to explore possible archetypal past life themes and the two of us, including our intuition and our knowing, um, unveiled possible story of this person having been 
traumatically persecuted in the past for having spoken up against the church or some kind of religious doctrine. And there's a lot more detail to the story, but the basic premise is that the themes landed really poignantly with this client and from here they had an understanding of why they had this fear and this apprehension of talking and expressing their truth. And it was like a big light bulb had gone off them and it was really the starting point of their healing process, um, mm-hmm. which enabled them to slowly but surely work towards, I guess, finding a way to express their truth. And they began simply just by writing a blog, which for them was huge, but it meant that they were getting their truth, their message and their voice out from there. Mm. And I hope it's gone well from there. <laughs> um, but that that was that was how that one um, un- unfailed, I guess. Um, and I feel that um, in this particular case, they have moved from thinking, well, what's wrong with me, that there must be something wrong with me, mm-hmm. to, okay, there is a reason for it. Yeah, it can be so incredibly life-affirming. Yes, um, and this can be really liberating mm-hmm. because uh, because then having this information, we can say, okay, that was a you know, three centuries ago. Yeah. That's that was then. <laughs> yeah. Or, or whenever. That was then. Now this is a completely new life and I can choose mm. not to yeah, not 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 to deal with those influences anymore and just say no, okay. Be a victim of that anymore. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna take a different approach. So excellent. Anything else? Yeah, there's uh, look, there's look, there's lots, but the other one that comes to mind is um, a client that I've been working with over many years. I have quite a few regular clients, and this particular person was really grappling with their relationship. They were instinctively feeling that there was a reason that they were into in this relationship with this other person, um, but they were having some real issues in how their partner was currently behaving and treating them. Um, And actually in evolutionary astrology, we can look also at the combination of any two souls and see where their story intersects and where their growth may come from and where their challenges might be and what there's possibly there for them to work out, what soul contract might they actually have in this lifetime. And in this case, we could look at where their paths were um, at this particular time and what their possible reconnection um, was about in this life and you know, cut a long story short, it was pretty much just to hold the mirror of each other's shadows up to each other, which they had certainly (laughs) done. And in working with the current astrology, the current transit and progressions for both of them, it became quite evident that they actually accomplished what they were set out to accomplish and that indeed their contract was coming to an end and they no longer had to remain together. So with this knowledge... (laughs) I hope I didn't force the, you know, the, the person really made a conscious decision to end the relationship and it ended really amicably. Um, they're still friends and they managed to avoid a lot of that traditional sort of relationship breakup trauma and mess um, and mm-hmm. blaming, yeah, blaming and, and all of that yeah. sort of stuff and just sort of, yeah, look, this, this client talks about it a lot how comfortable a breakup that was because it's like, okay, we're done. She knew that. I I think they knew that on an instinctual level at the time, but it just helped validate what they were thinking. Yeah. Mm, Mm. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And this is actually a very nice segue uh, to my next point. It's more of a point than a question (laughs) because we we talked about it just for our listeners, is that uh, Diana will be back on Quantum Living and we will talk about relationships. So we'll have you back. Well, Diana, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Any final comment or point? Mm. There's a lot of misinformation out there at the moment. Astrology has become really, really popular and there's almost a lot of on the surface information. And I really encourage people to rather than just, you know, understand what your big three might be, for example, on social media, take the time and put the investment into actually getting your chart done by a professional astrologer and 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 seeing how that works for you what an astrologer can do is really bring all the pieces together um and it really can make quite a difference in your life 
Beautiful. Well, Diana, thank you so much. It's been a lovely conversation. Yes, thanks, Anna. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm looking forward to having you back in in a few weeks' time. Yeah, I look forward to it too. When when we'll talk more about well, we, when we focus on relationships because there's a huge, huge topic, and I've got my I've done quite a bit of uh, relationship uh, work or healing relationships in my own coaching work with people mm. so i have developed various models and and whatnot so oh, cool for now thank you so much thank for you. being on quantum living you're welcome it's been a pleasure and looking forward to having you back yep. again thanks anna thank you that's all for today folks i hope you enjoyed this episode and if you really loved it please post a review on apple podcasts or spotify to encourage others to listen to it for the show notes, guest and podcast info, reviews, comments and much more, please visit quantumlivingpodcast.com. And if you'd like to dive deeper into quantum living and explore how you could work with me, please contact me and I'd be delighted to help and support you on your quantum journey. I am your host, Anna Anderson. I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode of Quantum Living. Until then... Keep your vibrations high and be well.